Holy crap, I finally get to release this video. It's about fucking time, dude. I recently, or somewhat recently at least, had the opportunity to speak to Tribulation's lead singer and bassist, Johannes Anderson, about their brand new studio album, Where the Gloom Becomes Sound, some lineup changes, and everything else that Tribulation has planned in 2020. I say somewhat recently because this interview was actually recorded back near the beginning of December, but unfortunately, due to an embargo on virtually everything Tribulation related, I wasn't able to upload it until now. I'm not sure if that information actively changes or affects anything we talk about in this video. I certainly don't think it does, but just a heads up in case you feel otherwise. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. Enjoy! <laughs> Oh, I can hear you now. That was on my end. Apologies. Great. Pleasure to hear no from you. Problem. Yeah, thank you. Likewise. Thank you. Thank you for being here. A bit of a last minute thing. I understand it's maybe been a chaotic day for everyone in Tribulation, but it, I'm happy to speak to you. Uh, we're getting used to chaos, I guess. And uh, yeah, all, all fingers crossed for Adam and his... And his uh, girlfriends at the hospital mm -hmm. I, 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 uh, I imagine they just got there today didn't they yeah they did I haven't heard anything throughout the day though uh, but you never know I guess it could be tomorrow as well we'll see yeah that's that's I'm not guessing uh, yeah it's I'm not guessing the... he will send a picture or something when it's when it's out <laughs> Yeah, I'm guess it's not the kind of thing that takes a, a couple hours. You wait in line at the bank or something. No, it's not. But I, it is. A... I remember my experience. Mm -hmm. But it is a pleasure to have you here. I've been a fan of Tribulation for a long time. Uh, I even remember years ago, and this is a true story. 2013, uh, you guys were on tour with Watain and In Solitude. And it was an ex oh, yeah. it was an extremely cold day here in Ontario, and me and my buddy, kind of young, kind of stupid, didn't know what else to do. We just waited outside the venue all day. Oof. Yeah. Can't remember which month it was, but I, I'm guessing a cold one. <laughs> well, it, it was October for us, but it's Canada, so it's always cold here. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's way colder there, I guess. But it's, it's, we have kind of similar some parts of Canada, at least mm -hmm. Sweden. Uh, I want to. I want to start by uh, addressing the elephant in the room, uh, where gloom mm -hmm. becomes sound. This is your last album with Jonathan on guitar. What was the experience like? Did you know that he'd be leaving during the production of the album? Uh, no. Uh, although I have to say it wasn't. It wasn't a total surprise. Um, something. Something has been. Been a bit off. As, at least my personal view of it, but um, but uh, nonetheless, uh, he has to go with his with his heart on this one, and it's it's of course sad for for the rest of us. But um, we wish him luck in all his future endeavors. But yeah, something something felt felt a bit off. I would say the, the last year maybe. So this, kind of distance so this was something you were maybe anticipating? Yeah, I mean, as I just said, he, he, he kind of, the distance grew between us in the band, and he kept even more than usual for himself. Uh, and the way he talked about future and, and stuff felt maybe not the most positive in my, in my view. So I, you know, it wasn't a big surprise. That's too to bad. Honest. Yeah, but, uh, you know, it's, maybe it's for the best for all of us. You know, he could move on with his projects and we'll move on with Tribulation in a new kind of Tribulation 4.0 or something. Mm -hmm. And you, uh, <laughs> you've guess. already got uh, uh, Joseph Troll in the band. How does he change yeah. the dynamic of tribulation? 
I mean, first of all, the transition here was the most easiest thing I ever experienced. But, you know, Joseph has always been on the on the sideline of, of tribulation. He's always been part of our whole career. And, you know, we grew up together uh, and we're all playing mu- music together in different projects than tribulation. So it felt supernatural. And even Jonathan said when he when he when he told us that he's also always been thinking of Joseph as the natural replacement for him. And fortunately, Joseph said yes instantly. So it's been very smooth in that sense. Has Yosef uh, contributed to other Tribulation records? Because I'm truthfully not very familiar with him as a musician. No, uh, he's... I think he wrote a riff on a song from our second album, for example. And probably some lyric he's helped us with. And uh, just now, on this latest album, we he, he helped us a bit... He has a studio, and me and Adam went there to try to, you know, uh, finish one of Adam's songs together with Joseph, kind of. So, so he's always been, you know, somewhat helping <laughs> in a big or small way. Maybe kind of like the but fifth member now, of Tribulation? Yeah, you can see it as that. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, he is one of our best friends, so... It's it's uh, it's exciting times to see what what we can do with this guy. <laughs> and uh, I, and I, yeah, know... I think he... yeah, sorry. Oh, uh, I know that uh, obviously the album's not coming out for a month. Obviously, mm. uh, Joseph will not have contributed to it much. But is there a chance we'll get to see some of uh, the music that he might be working on with you soon? Because I imagine for some people, this is a bit of a left hand turn. Yeah, I mean. It's not the best timing, of course, from Jonathan's side, but I believe there's no good timing in leaving a band. It's always something in the way, you know, a tour or or an album or anything. There's no good, mm-hmm. there's no good quitting season. <laughs> I, I certainly can't think of one. <laughs> yeah, of course, but uh, no, he has not contributed that much on this one but who knows it depends I guess I mean uh, we'll see how long this pandemic shit goes on uh, if we're if any new music will arrive before we you know start to play live but I I, I kind of doubt it. I, it right I was... now it's right now it's just rehearse he has, he has to learn like a ton of songs so that that's the that's the priority, I guess, for him. I guess the good news is he's got lots of time to prepare. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, you know, it's also good to take things slow, anyhow. I think so. It's 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 okay. You know, uh, my personal guess is that live not really gonna happen until the fall, actually. So there should be plenty of time to. Get him into the tunes, learning the tunes, and uh, prepare for the live situation. To be honest, there's a part of me that doesn't think that we'll be able to do a lot of live shows when next fall comes around. I mean, I hope I'm wrong. I really do. But it's really hard to yeah. tell, you know? Yeah, I mean, it's it's a bit different from, from each continent as well, I guess. Uh, I mean, we, we postponed our our January, February tour now uh, till next fall, but that's in Europe. So I have no idea if it's going to be longer in the U S to get back or, I mean, no one knows at the, at at this moment, you know, there's a vaccine coming now, so maybe that saves the world, but it's going to still take a lot of time. I I guess. I, I, I think it's safe to say that no one's going to be going to the U S for a long time. (laughs) Like, I no. I only live about an hour and a half away from the U.S. border, and I doubt I'll be going there for a long time. Just the way they're headed and everything. Yeah, 
uh, it's not only the pandemic, you know, the last thing kind of Trump did was to raise the visa applications like times three or something. <laughs> oh, geez, did he really? So yeah, it was like six months ago or something. He just, yeah, it's, it's way expensive to, to go over now to get a visa. <clears throat> but I mean, if, if the label and, and the people want us, you know, it's going to solve, solve itself, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, how Maybe does... this Biden, Biden guy will, will turn it back. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that'll his that'll be in his first 100 days, making sure tribulation can tour the states. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm gonna I'm gonna text him soon. Yeah, at Joe Biden. What's his What's his uh, yeah. Is that his Twitter handle? Just do that. Here's how you can make yeah. America great again. Let tribulation tour. Yeah, exactly. Everyone would like it. <laughs> uh, how does "Where the Gloom Becomes" sound differ from previous studio albums? Uh, maybe it's a bit more streamlined. Maybe it's even more, uh, don't want to use the word, but mainstream in a way. It's, it's, it feels like every album gets more and more easy listened to. Uh, okay. Uh, in a way that, you know, uh, I'm not talking total radio friendly, but, uh, Maybe in that direction, unconsciously. Maybe more melodic and accessible, like a band like, say, Ghost or something? Sure, you, you can compare, compare, compare us to that. But yeah, I mean... <laughs> you don't sound too happy about we, that comparison. <laughs> <laughs> it's nothing we strive for, it's just our own development, I guess. We don't have a grand plan or anything, it just... This is how we like to write and record music at this uh, at this time, you know. Mm -hmm. So, so there's no grand plan behind it. Because I but, I, uh, I really like the the route that you guys have taken, going into more like gothic rock and classic heavy metal territory on the last couple of albums. Yeah. I, I think it's fascinating. I agree. Uh, maybe maybe that's. A bit that differs from the previous album that I think it's a bit more heavy metal. At least the songs that are heavy metal are more heavy metal on this new one. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, th I think I think of where the gloom becomes sound as you know A side and B side as on a vinyl, and and the A side is very maybe more experimental and strange, and and the B side is more the the rocker side, you know the heavy metal stuff and uh, so it's, it feels kind of broad in that sense uh, while down below the previous one was maybe not as uh, wide if you could say that is uh, myth uh, magic and the supernatural still like a big focus in the lyrics and the concept yeah but that's always been the case, kinda, or similar themes. But th that's definitely the the regions we usually tend to uh, get inspiration and, and find interesting ourselves. Mm -hmm. So it usually ends up there as well. But that's also not a plan. It just kinda falls together like that. Uh, I mean, it's 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 uh, mostly Jonathan and Adam who writes the songs and. Uh, they can just end up on the same kind of lyrical theme or just a feeling without even talking to each other. It's like, it was the same on Down Below. It's, it's you don't have to, you don't have to say it out loud. It's just unconsciously understood. <laughs> you just like knew way. where you were all headed. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, no one feels that we've gone too far, or 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 nowhere at all. You know, it's it's another record, and it's to me, it's maybe more dramatic as well. The songs are bigger on this one, and uh, 
I really like the, 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 the audio. I mean, the sound, the work, the, the mixer and the, <clears throat> and the producer and the, and the mastering guy did. It's probably the best sound in my ears that we had. But mm. I, I mean, that's always up for debate, but it's definitely the most grand sound. I think, I think I would agree. Now, granted, I've only heard uh, the one song from the album, uh, but the, I'm, I'm struggling to remember the name of it right now. My apologies. Uh, but it, oh, it the was, Yes, that's the one. I, I, it was, yeah. I thought it was huge. I, I loved the guitar chords. I, I loved uh, all those airy passages and the vocals. It, it really did feel like one of your biggest tracks yet. Yeah, I mean, I, th I thought you you got the album, <laughs> but then you're in for a surprise, I guess, because well, well, maybe that oh, no. that's first I, single is. I wish I had the album. You can send it to me if you like. I don't mind. <laughs> uh, you have to take that up with the <laughs> with the PR folks, uh, I guess. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it, it's definitely uh, way heavier. Or, yeah, majestic and dramatic sounding than than ever before. I would say. Do you think that anything? So, yeah, I mean. Ooh. Sorry. Uh, do you think that anything about your album is made more relevant or poignant in these dark and strange times? No, I can't say. Uh, I mean, the pandemic hasn't, you know put his mark on this album at all I would say it's kind of no <laughs> that's fair Simple no worries answer is no <laughs> yeah. yeah but I mean it, it's you know the lyric content was written at least when the pandemic had breaking out broken out so but uh, still I there's nothing underlined in those either that it, it's kind of typical tribulation lyric, to be honest. So that's no, all good. No don't, answer. don't fix what isn't broken, you know. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And uh, how do you respond to fans who would prefer that you play more traditional deaf or black metal, as opposed to what you've kind of got going on now? Mm, yeah. Good question. Uh, because for I mean, in, in just in my experience on the Metal Meltdown, anytime I review anything that's even slightly different from the norm, I get a bunch of people coming in going, "That's not true death metal. That's not true black metal. Uh, that's 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 poser stuff." Yeah, I was the same when I was eighteen, you know, but uh, I'm not anymore, and I guess I guess that's the answer. We 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 started off as as an extreme death metal band and. We loved the underground, and we came from the underground. And but I, as I got older, I or we got older, kind of we kind of don't care anymore about what's what you know what genre we are in or what genres we're supposed to like. I mean, we listen to every all kind of music. Uh, but yeah, I, I totally understand. I was the same when I was when I was younger. You know, you you wanted the most extreme, and especially when a band made extreme albums and then turned, uh, it felt a bit like a betrayal, perhaps. But you know, now that I'm older, I, I see why. Why 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 would you wanna why would you wanna be stuck in one genre when you can explore many? You know, mm -hmm. so I mean, if we were only to do death metal records, we probably would get bored and don't play anymore. You know. Oh, I I feel that. I mean, uh, yeah, there are really only a couple bands I can think of that get away with making like the same type of album over and over. Yeah, but they have such a strong foundation. Mm -hmm. Usually, if you think like the old old timers, like Morbid Angel or Cannibal Corpse, even you know their their albums, they are extreme death metal, and and that's what they should play. They can't change, you know, because mm -hmm. they've never shown any 
changing scenarios in their albums. So, no, that would be very, very strange if Cannibal Corpse did something else, you know. It, it's interesting you bring up Morbid Angel because the first thing I thought of was Illidivinum Insanus. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, that, that's that's one of a kind. Okay, that, that, <laughs> it happens. That <laughs> yeah, that was their uh, mistake, and I I don't know how much you know uh, jazz tobacco Mister Asak Top had been smoking to let David do that <clears throat> to the Morbid Angel catalog. <laughs> yeah, it was that. It was that was actually my first Morbid Angel record too, because I was I was still oh, in high school, and I wasn't really familiar with a lot a bad of. Story. Yeah, I, I know. I wasn't really familiar with a lot of like death and extreme metal. I kind of knew about industrial because I had listened to Marilyn Manson, so I expected something along that line. And even from that yeah. angle, I was just like, "This is a weird album. I don't get it." Yeah, no, it was definitely uh, one of. And uh, fuck off, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, I think they've recovered so, fine since then. I mean, uh, Morbid Angel, they yeah. did the, the Heretics album, was it? And um, uh, I can't, God, I can't I mean, remember the name. I can't remember the one after. I'm going to look this up, I'm curious. About. I remember it. I it, mean, the Heretic is a good one. But that's with Steve Tucker, the, the others. Oh, that would have been before. Okay, I'm think we're thinking yeah. of uh, Kingdoms Disdained, 2017. Ooh, I haven't even heard that. I, I um, I'm ashamed to say I don't keep up with with every new release, even though it's a band that I followed all my life. But uh, at some point, you know, you kind of lose them. But uh, we still have like ten other albums that still still is good, you know. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean they'll. I, I my my whole opinion is you know what screw Illidiv and them insaneness they still made Altars of Madness and Blessed of the Sick and mm. Domination and even the Steve Tucker stuff is really good very underrated yeah so, who am I, I to argue it. I mean my Formula Fate to the Flesh is probably my second favorite in the Morbid Angel catalog mm. but yeah and even um uh uh David the the singer he went off and did that Ultimus project with uh. The guitar is from Mayhem and the drummer mm. from Cryptopsy, so as, as far as I'm concerned, he redeemed himself there, too. Because that was a fantastic record. Yeah, yeah, yeah I mean, it's it's okay. <laughs> you know, they're, they're, they're uh, compensating, I guess. Gotta, gotta make up for lost time. Exactly. exactly. So I, I, I guess, long story short, we can't expect Tribulation to make an industrial metal record? Uh, I, I mean, probably not. <laughs> but I, I, we're not closing any doors at all. I mean, the first song of the album that you haven't heard, uh, but um, it is kind of industrial vibe. Uh, okay, in it, I would say, but you, you, you have to decide yourself. But the. the we would we, we we wouldn't go totally industrial. No, I don't think so. That would be that would be going going over the edge and and become something else than tribulation. So that would probably not happen. Uh, I got I got one more question for you, and then I gotta get going. What continues to mm -hmm. inspire tribulation as a band, uh, musically, spiritually, emotionally? Well. Uh, I guess, as always, the the never-ending tap of horror and <sighs> mythical beings that seem to never, uh, you know, you find new shit every year that you get interested in. And it's also a part of getting older, I guess. You get more interested in history and... But yeah, the horror element is definitely probably always gonna stay. So that's that's always an inspiration. Could be still the same movies as when we recorded the first album mm -hmm. that inspire us. So but yeah, I mean 
talking about movies, the, the it ain't as much as it used to be. That's you know sticking with you. That's good of the new releases, unfortunately. But uh, there's some coming once in a while. The Witch, uh, for example, was very good. Oh, that was a really good uh, movie. Yeah. That that same director went say, on to do The Lighthouse, which is one of my favorite movies in a long time as well. I haven't seen it yet, actually. I've been saving that one. <laughs> oh, it's it's a Drama. really cool movie. Yeah. Oh yeah, I, I the the uh, definitely the kind of thing I think uh, Tribulation would be very much a fan of. Awesome. Yeah, I'm gonna make some time for it. Maybe this weekend. Yeah, but I, that's that's the easy answer. The horror theme is is constant in tribulation, and probably will be forever. Awesome. Well, thank you very much for your time. Uh, uh, thank you very much for thank you. working around all this uh, chaos and making this happen. It's been a pleasure to speak with you. Likewise, and um, no worries. I mean, everything is a puzzle these days, <laughs> mm -hmm. isn't it? Puzzles yeah. are fun. Once you piece That's them together, so... everything looks nice. Yeah, sure, sure. But it was a bit easier when when we had an, when we didn't have a pandemic to you know cope with. <laughs> it's well, so fucking hard to plan anything. Just just taking pictures or making a music video is a nightmare log logistically. Oh, I, I can't but, imagine yeah. the the struggles of putting together a music video in these times. Yeah, it's hard. I'm. Um, I've just done one and I'm working on the second so uh, wish me luck <laughs> Are you, you absolutely I wish you great luck the metal meltdown wishes you luck I don't Thank know how you. much that'll help you because I'm nobody but who ah, knows but... <laughs> <laughs> no. the words will help well thanks once again uh, you have yourself a fantastic day I look forward to hearing the new album thank you have a good night Day. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Johans Anderson from Tribulation. Their new, uh, ladies and gentlemen, that was Johans Anderson from Tribulation. If you liked what you heard, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, you have yourself a fantastic fucking day.